Howdy, y'all. I'm Dr. Jeff Jarvis, and this is the Preeclampsia Eclampsia Protocol Review Module. Preeclampsia is a problem with hypertension in pregnancy. Hypertension in pregnancy. Well, how far in pregnancy? Well, specifically, 20 weeks gestation up to around six weeks postpartum. That's right. Delivery is not a guarantee that you can no longer have preeclampsia or eclampsia. So pregnancy, hypertension, 20 weeks before delivery, so 20 weeks gestation, up to six weeks following delivery. Now, the hypertension here causes problems for both mom and baby. For the baby, it can cause all manner of problems with the placenta, and that just seems bad. The placenta seems kind of important. We don't want to mess with it. So hypertension, bad. Now, since hypertension is a systemic vascular disease, we're looking for problems in the mom dealing with the brain, the liver, the kidneys, and the heart. So for mom, it can make her puff up like the Michelin man. I don't know if any of y'all have ever had big time edema, and I certainly hope you haven't, but it sure does seem like something none of us would want. Let's try to avoid that with our patients here. So the hypertension can also cause problems with mom's kidneys, leading to, among other things, protein spilling out into the urine. In the most severe cases, it can cause seizures and seizures that are particularly hard to control. When mom is seizing during or shortly after pregnancy, and it's not from an underlying seizure disorder, well, that is eclampsia. Now, we can help by identifying the condition and starting to treat it. ACOG, which is the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists, have issued position statements on the importance of early treatment, and they have started a campaign to increase rapid treatment as soon as it's recognized. The key thing to remember is this is a hypertension problem, and we need to treat it aggressively. Hypertension in pregnancy is a distinctly different beast than hypertension in the rest of the non-pregnant population. Now, hypertension typically is a problem that begins after years of uncontrolled high blood pressure. Isolated high values aren't an emergency, and we have time to do all sorts of things to get the blood pressure under control. Things like the dreaded dietary modifications, or worse yet, Increased exercise. Nobody wants to hear that. This is America, damn it. We want a pill. Well, if you don't take the damn pill for years, then hypertension can ca start causing some downstream effects. Well, that's not the case in pregnancy. This is a much more rapid onset problem, specifically because of the fetus. Fetuses always complicate things. So, with that out of the way, let's get into the protocol. And I want to start with the definitions. Now, the latest ACOG changes, preeclampsia is now based on blood pressure. Used to be based on some lab tests, no longer need those critters, blood pressure and symptoms. Now, there are two different blood pressures or blood pressure thresholds that we need to worry about. There's a lower one if mom is having severe symptoms and a higher one that we're going to treat regardless of if there are symptoms. So let's start with the lower one. So for a woman who meets the criteria of preeclampsia, meaning she is pregnant or recently was, between 20 weeks gestation and six weeks postpartum, preeclampsia is present with severe features if the systolic blood pressure is greater than or equal to 140 and, and, and both have to be here, systolic blood pressure 140 or above and diastolic 90 or above. Got to have them both. Now, the second condition, the higher blood pressure. If mom does not have any of those severe features, even if she's asymptomatic, preeclampsia is here if you see a systolic greater than or equal to 160 or a diastolic greater than or equal to 110. So for the lower blood pressure threshold, you got to have symptoms and you got to have both the systolic and the diastolic. 
if mom does not have the severe symptoms, then you need only one of these higher blood pressure thresholds. Systolic greater than or equal to 160 or diastolic greater than or equal to 110. Now, either one, higher or lower, you need not just one blood pressure, but two. The blood pressure has to be confirmed with a second reading that's at least five minutes after the first. Remember, cuff size is important. A cuff that is too small for the patient can lead to elevated blood pressures, and a cuff that is too big for the patient can lead to lower readings. Okay, we mentioned severe features. What are these? Well, new onset of headache, meaning chronic migraines, that doesn't count, right upper quadrant pain, or visual changes. Visual changes like blurred vision, like flashing lights, or like blind spots in their visual field, meaning they're seeing just fine, everything looks good, except there's this chunk that's missing out of their vision. Now, what about eclampsia? We mentioned chronic seizure disorders are an exclusion. Well, don't worry about sorting those things out. If mom is pregnant or immediately postpartum and she's having a tonic-clonic seizure, just assume it's eclampsia and treat it. All right, so those are the definitions and why we need to identify. Now let's get into the treatment. Bluff, the bottom line up front, be aggressive about looking out for this condition and treat it when you find it. The key components here are giving mag and treating that blood pressure. This is one of the few times we treat hypertension in an emergency. Now at the basic level, identify the condition. If it's present and you're a BLS unit, ask for an ALS intercept. Now the usual caveats here apply about go ahead and go to the hospital if you can get them to the ED before ALS would be able to intercept you common sensor. Now, at the advanced level, treatment is around giving magnesium and lowering the blood pressure. We've chosen to add nifedipine, trade name here is Procardia, specifically for treating hypertension with pregnancy, preeclampsia or eclampsia. Nifedipine, it's a generic calcium channel blocker and it lowers the blood pressure by relaxing smooth muscle and causing vasodilation. Because nifedipine works primarily on smooth muscle, it doesn't have the same effect on lowering heart rate, decreasing contractility and automaticity than diltiazem does. DILT, as you know, is the other calcium channel blocker that we carry. DILT works primarily on heart rate, not smooth muscle. And that's why we use DILT for SVT and AFib with RVR. The point of this don't try to use nifedipine to lower the heart rate and don't try to use DILT to lower the blood pressure. Remember, not all calcium channel blockers are the same. If they were, we would only need to carry one of them, and we don't. There's not one, there's two, because there are two indications. If you've been around EMS for long enough, you've probably used nifedipine before. It was certainly out there when I was on the trucks, and that was a long time ago. Well, back in my day... Mm -hmm. It's a little capsule. You poke it with a needle and you squirt it under the patient's tongue. We used to use this back in the day for all manner of hypertension. And you know what? It worked. Well, if it worked, why don't we still use it? Well, because it worked. It turns out that in the non-pregnant patient, rapidly lowering blood pressure can be dangerous. We ended up causing strokes by rapidly pulling the blood pressure carpet out from under our patients with chronic hypertension. Bad. Do not recommend that. Bad, bad, bad. It's so bad, as a matter of fact, that I want to be very, very clear about this. Do not treat hypertension outside of preeclampsia unless there's another protocol specifically for things like acute decompensated heart failure more about that in the future. So don't just treat your run-of-the-mill non-pregnant hypertension. Don't do it. Just don't do it. We cause more harm than good. Now, nifedipine, one more time, nifedipine only authorized for preeclamptic or eclamptic young women. Nobody else. None. Who else? Nobody. That's right. Nobody. Nobody. 
All right, let's get to when we treat. So we got a woman, systolic blood pressure is greater than or equal to 140 and diastolic greater than or equal to 90 and has severe features, then we're going to treat with MAG. We're going to give it as a big old bolus and then an infusion. That's that first group. For women with systolic of 160 or higher or diastolic of 110 or higher, now we're going to treat the blood pressure and we're going to give 10 milligrams of nifedipine orally. How do we give it? Well, poke it, squirt it, swallow it. It's kind of like a Daft Punk song. If you're a Daft Punk nerd, I'm a Daft Punk nerd. And it's kind of sort of like a Daft Never mind. You poke the capsule, you squirt the contents under the tongue, and then you have them swallow the rest of the capsule. And then you give mag the same way you do for other conditions. You're just doing the mag and then lowering the blood pressure. Now, think about who to treat this way. We want to give all patients with preeclampsia a mag. Either one of those blood pressure thresholds, they get mag. If their blood pressure is the higher of the two, then we want to lower it and we give DILT. Now, on the mag, this is big old bolus. This is not the same dose of mag we use for other conditions. We're talking six gram bolus here, and then we're going to hang the infusion. All right, for what about for those eclamptic patients, those who are seizing? Well, first, treat the seizure with midazolam like you do for all other seizures then give them mag. Now, you give the bolus and the infusion. Now, if they've stopped seizing, you don't need to give the midazolam anymore, but I do want you to give the mag. If you get there, they're hypertensive, and they just finished seizing, give them mag. All right. Last thing about this is these are not the patient's who you take to any hospital. They need to go to the hospital where their OB practices. Most women have established care with an OB and know where to transport them. Go there. And for those women that don't know, go to one of the hospitals that is an OB specialty hospital, and those are listed in the protocol app. All right, that's it for the preeclampsia and eclampsia protocol review. It was a short one. I hope you'll forgive me for that. Well, thanks for listening. And as Always thanks for what y'all do every day to serve our community. Take care, y'all.